Yes, let's start with the next uh, example. In this case, it is M A A2 B2 type in which AA is a bidentic ligand with same donor atoms. Now, I have drawn here its cis isomer, cis isomer. In its cis isomer, two chlorine are on the adjacent position as well as all the nitrogen donor of ethane and diamine are on the adjacent positions. This is its mirror image. Right? Now, <coughs> we can see that this mirror image do not superimpose on its object. So, we can say these are non-superimposable mirror images and therefore, this particular isomer of the compound is optically active. Fine. Now, if this particular isomer is dextro, then obviously the other will be levio. But which one is dextro, which one is levio, we cannot predict it theoretically. This always you should remember. It's not that always the first thing is dextro, then this is levio. No. It is this can also be dextrolivio, this can also be dextrolivio, but it has to be found experimentally, fine. We have to find through polarimeter in which direction the plane polarized light is rotated by either of these two isomers, fine. Now, let me draw its uh, trans isomer now. This is its cis isomer. And if we draw the trans, let's observe the optical activity in that case. Now, <coughs> for trans isomer, we keep these two CL on the diagonally opposite position and nitrogen donor also on the diagonally opposite position. Right? Now if you draw its mirror image, you will see that mirror image will be exactly the same as that of the compound, like this. So this is its mirror image and you see these two, <coughs> one and two, superimpose on so it's a this particular isomer that is trans forms superimposable mirror images fine so that means it will be optically inactive so usually we are finding here that the trans isomers due to uh, presence of uh, symmetry in them, they do not form non-superimposable mirror images. So usually they are optically active in it. Fine. Now, we finish with two type of examples. Now I'll take another very important type of example. That is the third one. In which only one type of ligand is present, but its nature is bidentic. So, that type of ligand, we can say in general, it is a a thrice type of compound. For example, we know here a is a bidentic ligand with same donor atoms. Fine. So here I take one example of cobalt. One of the isomers of cobalt uh, uh, coordination compound is this one in its plus three oxidation state. En En is the bidentic ligand with same donor atoms that is nitrogen. Let me draw its cis and trans isomers. Sorry, uh, pardon. Uh, in this case only one isomer is possible as we have discussed its uh, cis and trans is not possible in this case because only one type of isomer is possible. So, uh, let me draw its structure. Suppose this one. Why? So all the positions are occupied by nitrogen in this case. Fine. Let's draw its mirror image now. If we draw its mirror image, it will be like this. And you see, if you put this on this, then they will not superimpose each other. This EN will come here, right? No ligand will superimpose on each other, fine. So it's again a <coughs> non-superimposable mirror images. Therefore, it is always optically active. Remember this compound form one type of structure and uh, this compound, this type of example is always optically <coughs> active. Right? So, Let's take one more example of this category. 
another complex of uh, cobalt with uh, one anionic ligand, cobalt OX. Fine. Again, the cobalt plus the oxidation state here. OX is oxalate ion acting as a bidentate ligand. Do we know this is its structure. This is oxalate ion. Both the donor are oxygen. Now, let's draw one of its this. The only one structure. And uh, we'll draw its mirror image. Now you see, we can use a short form for this, just like abbreviation used in this case. But uh, I'll draw the complete structure here. This is the one structure. And here. Fine. So this is the one isomer for this particular compound. Let's draw its mirror image. If we draw its mirror image, we'll find that it will form non-superimposable mirror images. So once again, just like the previous case, it will also be optically active image. Fine. So you see, you put this on this, you will find that they form non-superimposable mirror images. So it will be always optically act. Fine. So we have covered three types of examples. One different example <coughs> again I would like to cover. Uh, another type. That will be the last example. One of the isomer M A A B2 C2 type. Again, uh, octahedral formation number 6. Fine. Here we have <coughs> one common example of uh, cobalt that is this. One of the isomer of this particular compound is optically active. Let me draw only that particular isomer. One cis isomer of this compound. Fine. Let's draw its mirror image. Now we find in this particular case Again, they form non-superimposable mirror images. Therefore, this isomer is optically active. Fine. So, <coughs> in this way, we have covered all the different type of geometrical isomers as well as optical isomers in case of coordination compounds. We have found in case of optical activity, it is something related to behavior of the compound towards the plane polarized light. Rather it rotates the plane polarized light towards left or right. So in that case, we simply draw its structure, either cis or trans isomer, we'll see its mirror image and then we'll see the relation between the two things, two images. If they are superimposable, then it cannot rotate the plane polarized light. But if it is non-superimposable, that means this compound will be unsymmetrical. This compound is unsymmetrical. And I have told you, unsymmetry is related to the property of optical activity. Find something unsymmetrical will definitely rotate plane polarized light and it will be always optically active. So that's all for this particular topic. <coughs>